Today is Tuesday, May 21st. The White House is winning one subpoena fight today, but just lost another, I'll explain. Plus, a ban on a major Chinese company, how AI could help fight cancer. And yes, another mistake on the most popular HBO show ever. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. More testimony about the Russia investigation was supposed to happen today, but don't expect to see it. The AP says President Trump told former White House counsel Don McGahn not to testify in front of a House committee, even though he was subpoenaed to show up. McGahn was a key figure in Robert Mueller's Russia investigation and is named in Mueller's final report. So the House Judiciary Committee wants to ask him some questions. Assuming McGahn does not show up, the House committee is threatening to hold him in contempt of Congress just like the House already voted to do to Attorney General William Barr for ignoring a different subpoena. So what consequences will they actually face? That's TBD. In the meantime, the White House may not be able to block a different request from lawmakers, the one to see President Trump's financial records. They subpoenaed the president's longtime accounting firm, and now The Hill reports a federal judge decided to uphold that subpoena, basically ruling against the White House for trying to block it. But Trump is not giving up his fight. He'll likely appeal. China's largest tech company is taking a major hit from Google and the U.S. government. Huawei was on track to be the world's top smartphone brand, but maybe not anymore. First, the Google situation. Huawei's phones use Google software and apps, but now Google is scaling back the software it'll give the Chinese tech company, at least for new phones right now. And Google is not the only one doing this. Bloomberg reports several chip makers like Intel now say they'll stop supplying their products to Huawei as well. And more companies are expected to follow. The reason is not just about business. This is political. Last week, the Trump administration effectively blacklisted Huawei, giving an order that means American companies will need to get a government license to sell anything to the company due to concerns about national security. The U.S. has accused Huawei of spying for the Chinese government, though the company says not true. Either way, it's a big loss for a big company. CNN reports the ban could delay the rollout of the faster 5G wireless networks around the world, and it's likely to hurt Huawei's smartphone sales. It's also President Trump's latest jab at China while the two countries fight over a trade deal. The big question for both, how long will all of this last? Speaking of 5G, the next generation wireless networks... The U.S. government is now looking at U.S. companies to build it faster in hopes of becoming the world leader in that technology. That's why the FCC chairman now says he's ready to back the big merger of T-Mobile and Sprint. CNBC reports the companies have now agreed to, one, build the new faster 5G network for most of the U.S. within a few years, and two, help provide cell service to more of rural America. But even as that $26 billion deal between T-Mobile and Sprint takes a step forward— it could still run into some problems. Both the FCC and the Justice Department have to give it the thumbs up. And Justice Department officials are reportedly pretty concerned still. They worry that such a big deal between two top wireless carriers could hurt competition and be bad for consumers, leaving only four nationwide competitors. More news ahead, but first, a quick break for today's sponsor. America's beverage companies are working together to support families as they reduce the sugar in their diets. Coke, Dr. Pepper, and Pepsi are providing more great-tasting options with less sugar or no sugar at all, putting clear calorie labels on every product, and working with public health organizations and other national and local partners to build stronger, healthier communities. With more choices, smaller portions, and less sugar, American families can find the balance that's right for them. You can learn more about how these three competitors are working together at balanceus.org. That's balanceus.org. Now back to the news. Google says artificial intelligence is learning how to spot early-stage cancer, sometimes even better than doctors. In Gadget reports, Google is working on a new AI-based tool that will read CT scans. This might help doctors find cancerous spots that are hard for even them to see. For now, Google is testing this on lung cancer. The AI tool looked at thousands of chest scans. Google's AI tool was 94% accurate in finding cancer, finding 5% more cancer cases than even doctors. Keep in mind, this technology still needs some work and more clinical research, but Google says so far, the results are pretty encouraging. Ford is cutting thousands of jobs. 
NBC News reports about 7,000 employees are going to lose their jobs between now and August. The first round of layoffs started this week. The Wall Street Journal reports these layoffs mainly affect salaried employees who work all around the world. The layoffs will save the company about $600 million a year, and it's part of a massive restructuring. But Ford is not alone in this. General Motors and Volkswagen have also had layoffs and restructuring lately. The Wall Street Journal says within the past year, car companies cut 30,000 positions around the world. They're all turning their attention to things like electric and self-driving cars instead. Little Caesars is hopping on the meatless menu bandwagon. The Verge says it wants to try out meatless sausage on its pizzas. It plans to put it on the Impossible Supreme pizza. Little Caesars is partnering up with the company Impossible Foods for this, just like Burger King did with Impossible Whoppers. For now, Little Caesars' new menu item will be sold in four cities, but if all goes well, it could be available in more places by the end of the year. It happened again. Game of Thrones fans spotted another mess up in the latest episode. A couple weeks ago, it was a coffee cup. This time, it was plastic water bottles, two of them. Gizmodo says you can see them about halfway through the series finale behind the cast members' feet. HBO hasn't said anything about this mix-up yet, but USA Today reports the bottles will likely be edited out, just like the coffee cup was. Still, Variety says the series finale of Game of Thrones was HBO's most-watched show of all time, with a record 19.3 million viewers that night. And that's it for today. You are ready to go. Thank you so much for listening. And a quick heads up to those of you in the L.A. area, especially the women. I'll be interviewing my friend and the author of the new book, Bossed Up, in Santa Monica on June 4th. You are invited to join us. With your ticket, you'll not only get to attend the event, you'll also go home with a copy of the book, Bossed Up, which is meant to help women build a career and life they actually want. And I can tell you I'm reading it now. It's really good. So if you're interested, check out the details at bossedup.org slash LA. That's bossedup, B-O-S-S-E-D-U-P, bossedup.org slash LA. I would love to meet you in person. Either way, don't forget you can always read more about today's stories in today's show notes. Just find them at thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by 4 in the morning, so we'll chat again tomorrow. Have a great day. 